Today we have a very special cigar and I'm late to the party because somebody has friends in Hong Kong for some reason and I don't. So I'm a little late on this review compared to my other two Asian friends, but it's still here. Drew State Year of the Dragon. This cigar, I don't know, there's something about the texture of the wrapper that seems nice. I don't know what it is. It feels aged. Just looking around the body to see if there's any damages. I'm not sure if where I got it from was a purveyor through Hong Kong. I only bought two of them because MSRP of this bad boy is $37. It is a 6x52 Toro. And I paid $45 for this because every other site was either sold out or it has not hit any market yet. So I got to 45 bucks, spent 90 bucks on two of them. I do a lot of sacrifices for you guys. I don't think that's really much of a big markup compared to me taking a flight to fucking Hong Kong and then grabbing the box and then coming back home. I think I'll pay the extra $8 to just get the cigar here don't ship to me when it comes to research on cigars i tend to look towards half wheel or at least people who i've asked who are reviewers like their sources of how they give their information i tend to lean towards their judgment or their opinions i never heard of webwire and that website provided a little bit of information i'm gonna read it so i'm gonna look at my monitor but again I never heard of Webwire. It's just the first time it ever popped up for me. And I've been doing research on cigars for many, many years. And this website just came out of nowhere out of the wet works and gave me information about something that's supposed to be technically undisclosed. Not too sure if it's real or not. People who have reviewed this cigar, take your judgment or anybody who ever seen Webwire, let me know to basically ignore it. But as of this moment, Officially by COH and from Drew Estate, officially by their records, this is undisclosed. But under the umbrella of Webwire, it says this is a marketing service announced from COH Cigars of Hong Kong in collaboration with Drew Estate. There's an Asian marketing service announced from COH Cigars of Hong Kong in collaboration with Drew Estate, which created the Liga Privada, Unico City year of the dragon that's what the cigar i'm smoking today is this is where i kind of see that this may be wrong this site because it's telling me that the cigar is supposed to be a six and a half by 56 but on half wheel and about 10 other sites tells me this is a six by 52 but on web wire it is saying six and a half by 56 and it's a harmonious marriage of the finest tobacco with a rich Royoyo Brawl Leaf Hybrid enveloping a robust San Andres Otapan Negro Ultimo Corte Binder. And the fillers are supposed to be the Dominican Republic and Pennsylvania, but has Piloto Cubano and Corojo 99. Then it kind of ruins the surprise for me about some of the flavor notes in there. But again, I haven't watched anybody's reviews. I'm mean, last time. This is called Webwire. Not too sure how accurate that website is. Everything else, it's saying six by 52 Toro. This one is saying six and a half by 56. Those sentences I said earlier about what's in the cigar, take that with a grain of salt. Now that I'm done yapping my mouth, let's get into the cigar. The wrapper is very sweet. They have this chocolateiness, chocolateiness. You have this chocolatiness. Is that a word? Chocolatiness? Chocolateness? Chalkness? Chocolatiness. I have entered it now. It's very sweet to the scent. I like it. While the foot is a little bit more spicy and earthy and a little bit of hay and coffee in the foot. Yeah, wrapper is more sweet and chocolate while 
The foot is more hay, earthy, and espresso. With a little bit of spice to it. Not a lot, but a little tang to it. Well, it's time for the cigars bar mitzvah. Mazel tov. Ooh. Get a little spice. And chocolate. Yep. Spice and chocolate. Let's see if this cigar lives up to the $37 price tag. This is Liga Privada's Year of the Dragon. Okay, off the back. Definitely spice notes in there. Definitely something earthy. Oh, that spice is hitting the back of my throat. Coffee. Chocolate. Hmm. Wow, that earth just kind of evolved. Almost like a Pokemon. The earth turned into like mushroom. It has like this gaininess to it. But the smoke output's a little more thicker. Yeah, the smoke is giving me like a texture feeling on my palate. And the pat like, I guess and because of the taste note kind of reminding me of mushroom, I feel like I just ate some type of mushroom from like a like when I make steak or when I go to a steakhouse, I usually have mushroom as my side order. Yeah, that earthiness, it's in the way in the front it's like the main flavor note you get wow the chocolate the spice well the spice is the second most prevalent taste note because i feel the spiciness to it but everything else kind of sits back it's more of this mushroom like earthiness it's actually pretty fucking good i'm actually quite liking it I want to do something special for you guys this episode. I'm not going to keep the ash for too long, but the ash is mostly gray. While the sides being essentially pure white. I'm going to ash it now. Don't want it on my lap or on my shirt. This is, this is not bad. The initial chocolatiness and express what I had in the very beginning. It's basically gone. And it's just predominantly this earth flavor while everything else kind of takes a sit back. You get this cedary woodsiness, this intense earthiness. It's very gritty, very down to earth, literally. And you get this little burst of sweetness here and there. The smoke output, I'm quite fond of, honestly. I feel like a dragon. Smoke of the cigar. The draw is slightly tight. In other words, it's a kind of loose cigar. It burns really slow though. 
which is a good, which just means I can enjoy this for a lot longer. I don't know why. I actually quite like the taste of the cigar. It has a bit more flavor than some of the last dragons I had. Not trying to diss at all the dragons I had, but some of them were kind of lackluster. This one has a little bit more oomph to it. The spice kind of comes in and it kind of dips away. It kind of comes back. It kind of dips away. So it's basically playing with your palate. But predominantly, you get this pungent mushroom earthiness with a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of woodsiness. I guess slight hay. Or I guess you could say barnyard. You kind of get the slight heinous to it. I'm not talking about crime activities. It's not a heinous crime. It's hay. Ness. H A Y N E S S. Heinous. Not law and order. Okay. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the second third. All right. So I'm at this point of the cigar. Where's the front? There you go. That's the front. The flavor notes are actually ramping up a little bit. Unfortunately, it is canoeing a little bit. Taste notes. I don't know how to describe it. I'm getting like this little nuttiness to it. And this very, I'm not sure to say salt. I guess you could say salt. It's getting like salty. It's almost like, like French fries. That sodium feeling. It feels like sodium, I guess. Salt. Yeah, salt. But I'm just not currently a fan of this intense canoeing that's going on. One side is definitely lower than the other. And I do want to touch it up. At the same time, I want to see if it's possible for it to fix itself. So taste notes are essentially the same other than the two added notes I said there is now, which is that nuttiness and that saltiness. Everything else remains the same. That pungy mushroom earthiness, that woodsy element, hence the sweetness. Either it could be some chocolate or maybe it is that nuttiness that's giving it that little sweetness kick to it. But so far, this has been a good cigar. So I'm going to do myself a favor and get to the last third and put the cigar down for maybe a minute or two. Have the heat kind of catch up or kind of relax because my fingertips are like right here. And I can feel the heat inside. I'm not too sure if it's moisture. I'm not too sure if it's not much moisture. I bought a new humidor. It's just this big cedar box that holds about 200 cigars. That's my current new dry box, essentially. So I left it in there for about, what, five days? Six days already? Yeah. It's been in the dry box for about six days. So far, the cigar has been perfect when it comes to along the lines of condition. It's not cracking. It's not falling apart. It's maintained. It's very shiny. And as you can see, it's kind of fixing itself. I, yes, you saw a little jump cut, but I did not touch the cigar up at all. I placed it down for a good five minutes. Didn't have to relight it. I just needed for the heat to catch back up because it was the inside was getting way too hot and it was burning more like a pencil shape or like a pencil tip for the foot. So I just gave it time to breathe. Essentially, I'm going to go to the last third. See you guys then. So I'm at this point of the cigar, essentially the last third. And I think I'm ready to cast my judgment. The last third intensified, ironically, the last third ramped up a lot when it comes to flavor notes. It got better. And that little espresso in the background is slowly moving up a tad bit. It only moved like a tiny centimeter, not even an inch. It's a little centimeter. You get a little bit of the espresso note at the very, very ending of the finish. It's been very delightful. Now it's getting a little bit more nutty and more sweet. That pungent mushroom is slowly kind of taking steps back or it's coming up more sweeter, which I think is like a nice way to say like a bitter ending because the ending is not much better. 
or a sweet ending, whatever how you describe it, the, my words don't make sense because brain not work because of heat. I don't know. I might be having a heat stroke at the moment, but this has been a decently great cigar. Do I feel like this cigar is $37? I'll put this cigar more along the lines of like the typical Liga Pravada price points, like the 18 to like $23 price points. Would it be 37? Eh, maybe a little bit too steep. It's something I would not mind revisiting again down the line, but I think it's a little bit too much. Everything complements each other when it comes to the taste notes. I've been having a little bit of a construction issue and more of an internal issue. And to go more in depth into that is I don't puff a lot. You know, I take a puff, give it like 45 seconds to a minute, do a puff, give it 45 seconds to a minute, do another puff. And that's just been my schedule. But every single time I stay consistent with puffing a cigar, it goes straight back to that pencil tip formation which then the internal aspects, wherever my hand is placed, if it gets close to where the foot is, because obviously the foot is constantly moving closer and closer to the cap because obviously it's burning. But the midsection starts to get extremely hot that I have no choice to wait like another two to three minutes to puff again because it's burning my hands. That's just been like one of the main flaws I have for the cigar so far. But smoke output, amazing. Draw, amazing. It has that resistant that is perfect, in my opinion. But it constantly going back to that pencil shape formation, kind of annoying because it makes the cigar too hot because it causes a lot of canoeing, which could be a problem. Depending on the area you're in, if you're outdoors trying to smoke this, good luck because of the natural wind, it's gonna severely canoe your cigar. I'm in a controlled environment. Yes, I have a fan next to me. Yes, it's a little more stronger, but I have it on the lowest settings. And I have it going towards behind me, slightly hitting my ear. I don't want to hit the mic. I don't want you guys to hear it. And I especially don't want the wind hitting the cigar so it makes it canoe. But with this control environment, it's constantly canoeing and it's constantly going to that pencil shape for the foot. That's essentially my wrap up for the last third. So let's get into my thoughts and opinions on this cigar. But the first one being appearance. With the parents, that comic strip Year of the Dragon, I kind of like it. It's obviously, they're using the band of the Liga Pravada, but instead of putting Liga Pravada T2, what they typically put on this style of band, they have just the Year of the Dragon, but more like in a comic font. Then you have the foot band, which is right here. You have the dragon scales that goes around. You have one of Drew's states like Signia. And you have a 2024 right there with it saying dragon right in the middle. I don't know that. Because what else can I say? The band is nice. Simple, effective to the point. Nothing over the top. Simple, but yet very effective. The cigar itself, how it looked prior to me lighting it up. I liked how the Toro looked. I liked how the wrapper looked. I liked how just everything with the cigar looked. I'm gonna give the appearance seven and a half. It's very simple when it comes to the foot band and for the regular band, but it's straight to the point, effective. They didn't go all fancy. They're trying to make the alternative dragon insignia. When it comes to construction, I'm just gonna give it a six. I constantly had to put the cigar down for a good five, to six ish minutes. So that pencil tip could burn the middle tobacco. So we'll go back to being flat. But when it was burning, when I was trying to review it, when I was trying to smoke it, trying to get my opinions, taste notes, when I was trying to gather all the intel I can to give you guys, basically report to you guys of what I'm experiencing, that pencil tip kind of ruined a lot of things because it constantly overheated the cigar. And that's a flaw when it comes to construction, especially the canoeing. I'm going to give the construction a six. With taste notes, I actually enjoyed it. 
with that mushroom with a little saltiness here and there the little hints of espresso and here and there chocolate just coming in very so slightly not being a main focus but just giving a little burst of flavor with the nuttiness coming in the cedar note with just all these things dancing your palate and not being overwhelming or and not really making your palate feel off balance everything was actually well executed so i'm gonna give the taste note a solid eight i actually enjoyed it i won't mind having the cigar again but i still don't kind of feel like the cigar is worth the 37 dollars for the price point i feel like this is more along the lines of the 23 dollars maximum like if i see them for 17 bucks i'll grab it let's see it for 20 bucks eh, i'll grab it let's see it for 24 i'd be hesitant but i might grab it for 37 i'd be way more hesitant you know it was a good experience but as you can see with that smoke output that is beautiful but there's still a lot of flaws to the cigar but that being said it is still an ash but there's still much more tweaks the cigar needs for it to be better. Maybe then it would be worth $37. But as a stand, I'll rank the cigar more around a $20 to $22 range. And it being around, and the score being around the seven mark. But that concludes my review of the Drew Estates Liga Pravada Year of the Dragon. Hope you guys enjoyed today's review. Until next time. As always, I love your faces and I'm out. Peace.